Hello everyone, welcome to Switch Up. We've got another review for you today, this time of The Serpent Rogue. This was written for us by Asdin over at Grinning Wolf Games, so thank you very much to you, Asdin. If you ever wanted to become a Plague Doctor tasked with ridding the world of Eldritch Goop, corrupting everything it touches, well then The Serpent Rogue may well be the game for you. Is there a doctor in the house, or will you have to make do with a pocket full of poses? Well, thank you to Team17 for the review code, and now, Let's find out. The world exists thanks to a balance created by a serpent that bites her own tail, creating harmony. This balance is broken when dark forces disturb the serpent, making it turn the harmony into poison, bringing a corruption that blights the land. When this happens, the wardens appear to set things straight. These supernatural plague doctors have the skills and the knowledge to get to Mount Morris and confront the Serpent Rogue. The game has an air of Lovecraftian lore and horror to it, and the Warden is a talented character, able to use alchemy and taming abilities to get the job done. Nothing is as it seems, and it's the kind of game where the player will understand how the world works through trial and error. The Serpent Rogue is an action adventure that will see the Warden collecting, studying and making brews out of items found within the world. There are side quests to carry out as well and there is a grand scope of freedom on how you can carry some of these tasks out. The Warden carries a portable lab that can be used to learn the properties of ingredients and to concoct potions. The gameplay is slightly slow paced in the beginning as you experiment with and attain these ingredients. Some are more accessible than others as to be expected, so there is a lot of farming and grinding in the game, although it isn't as tedious as one would think. The concoctions that can be created are as numerous as they are fantastic, and discovering a new one through the clever use of simple coding mechanics allows for the player to experiment with little fear of wasting ingredients. An example would be the brewing ingredients that properties spell out add 5 vitality to make a healing potion. Half of the fun is to see what can be achieved through alchemy. This can be applied, albeit to a much more limited amount, to forging and enhancing weapons and other gear as you go through the game. Another interesting mechanic is the ability to tame wildlife. First you need to study them until you have a grasp at what their stats are and what they eat. I managed to feed a stray dog some raw meat and it became my companion. I tried bringing wild hens to the camp, but since I had no joy, I instead concocted a chicken transforming brew and threw it at one of my followers. Talking of followers, these arrive at the docks and can be hired by paying gold. They are a vital part of the game as they are needed to carry the cleansing vessel all the way to the concentration of corruption. Gold can be earned by completing side quests or by creating potions and brews as requested on the notice board outside the abandoned house. There is an element of combat, although it is a simple affair which can become somewhat tedious at times. The enemy can be locked onto, but I did find that it takes time to get used to the flow of the combat. The Warden can block attacks and throw charged swipes at the enemy. Weapons and items do break after some time though, which can be a bit annoying, especially when you intend on exploring for long periods of time. With this in mind, it may be wise to pack extra things that you'll need as you go exploring. You can become encumbered by too much stuff, so you'll need to learn to plan ahead and prioritize. The alternative is to have companions carry your things for you at the cost of overseeing their welfare as well as your own. One of the main aspects of the game is the gathering of resources, and most of the important stuff happens to be in the large areas which are punished by the build-up of consecutive corruption storms. As mentioned before, this is a game that requires some planning, and checking the weather forecast of these rich areas is no exception. There will be a slow countdown, and once it reaches 100%, the corruption will start to spread its tentacles and zap your life away. The strategy is to be in these areas after the storm when the counter resets. I found this to be a double-edged sword in terms of mechanics. The sense of urgency meant that you had to be swift and resourceful in your actions, but on the other hand, it can be tough to find exactly what you need when in a rush. I had no real issues with this as it hammers down the tone of the story, but having said that, the map could have been slightly more user friendly in terms of being able to open it and inspect it properly. Unless I missed something, I was only really able to follow the portion of the map displayed on the top right of the screen. 
The controls are well implemented, allowing you to quickly hotkey items to the D-pad. The Warden can pretty much hold, hit with and throw anything that he has equipped and this was helpful when throwing harmful bruiser enemies and the button prompts added to the screen meant that I could very quickly refer to which button I pressed in order to throw the poison at the enemy rather than accidentally drinking it myself. Due to the realistic movements of the character, controlling him does feel somewhat weighted down. This meant that certain actions and turns may take a tenth of a second longer, which can be the difference between life and death. This is amplified during combat, but you'll soon learn to create a safe gap between you and the enemy, as well, of course, as blocking accordingly. The Serpent Rogue is a great mix of exploration, alchemy and gathering, and it's interesting that there are so many ways that you can play the game. Slightly tedious combat was a small negative, but on the whole gameplay gets 18 out of 20. Controls are intuitive and responsive, the cursor on the world map feels slightly slow, and the weighty feel of the character can lead to a few frustrations in combat, but overall controls get 17 out of 20. When it comes to the visuals, the character modelling is somewhat reminiscent of games such as Okami, as it too shares that thick, outlined, cel-shaded aesthetic. It is a style that suits the game very well, albeit there are some slightly jagged edges. The cast of characters you meet range from rats to skeletal versions of yourself, and there is a good use of dark colour. Watching the corruption storm clouds from the comfort of your camp is as beautiful as it is dreadful, and one of the best things about the game is most certainly the overall design of the world and its inhabitants. They are either colourful and vibrant or dark and mysterious. The locations, such as the shop, have no salesperson, with the entire shop instead being alive, walls covered in huge eyes, watching your every move whilst whispering that they require your gold. Some of the effects, such as the fog or the dark ooze, help to enforce the tone of the game. The performance is where things are let down slightly. I found intermittent stuttering when entering a new area, both in frame rate and in terms of the sound. Also, the font size can be really small and would have benefited from an option to increase it. There are times when reading is required and it can be hard to do so due to this issue. The camera can be zoomed in and out and most of the time it hovers over the player. An extra zoom in would possibly have also benefited the game. The audio has a collection of voiced sound effects as well as animal noises and these really help bring the characters to life and add to their personalities. Other sound effects include the rustling of your pockets when checking the inventory, the sizzles from brewing concoctions or the wraith-like sounds of the corruption headed towards the player. There is some orchestral dark music playing juxtaposed against melodic flute music at other times. They really reflect the areas the players are in, and I didn't find it overbearing in any way, shape or form. Visuals are appealing yet mysterious and moody, and the cel-shaded aesthetic suits the narrative. The few performance issues do let the game down slightly though, and visuals get 15 out of 20. The sound department is of a good overall standard, and they help elevate the atmosphere, and audio gets 17 out of 20. The Serpent Row costs £15.99 and regional equivalents are on your screen now. This feels like a very fair price and if I had to be honest, I expected it to be more expensive at first due to how much fun it is to play and the production values. Having said that, those minor performance issues do let things down a tad and some players may feel as if the mechanics become a bit repetitive, although I found that as long as I mixed up the tasks I carried out, this didn't really affect me as I felt as if how you play is really up to you to a certain extent. With all this in mind, value gets 18 out of 20. To conclude, The Serpent Rogue is a fun action adventure that throws in complex and contrasting game mechanics. There is almost no hand holding at all and it requires the player to use their skills and imagination to solve the many challenges ahead. It's a game that requires patience as well as time and those with both will find a lot to love here, with alchemy and taming being at the forefront of your skills. If you want to go Pokemon style, travelling with different beasts and monsters, you can. Alternatively, if you want to spend your time using villagers as test subjects for your experiments, you can do this too. The constant grind to gather resources in blighted areas can be repetitive and uneventful at times, and having other means to acquire both money and ingredients early in the game could have made it a bit more accessible to some players. 
If you are happy with the premise and know exactly what it is you are getting yourself in for, then it will help you to acclimatise to what's on offer in this dark land. I'm very happy that I got to play this and hope that the developers expand on this game's idea in the future, possibly adding some other activities such as farming or fishing. What's here though is definitely a lot of fun, and if you do end up buying it, it won't be a plague on your collection. The Serpent Rogue gets a switch up score of 85%. Thank you everybody for watching this review, I hope you enjoyed it, please do remember to leave a like if you did. Another big thank you to Asdin for writing this one for us, please do check out his channel Grinning Wolf Games, there will be a link to it in the top pinned comment. A quick thank you to our Patreons as always for your continued support and to each and every one of you for watching our videos, take care and until next time, happy gaming.